Hello everyone, this is another video brought to you from Bell's Books, which can be found online at abesbooks.com. In this video, I chose 10 of the most valuable fiction novels and their authors. I'll be discussing the latest sale prices, as well as some interesting and little known facts behind the publications. So there's no particular reason that I chose the 10 books I did, except that clients had asked about them and the sale prices that I'm bringing to you is from Heritage Auctions. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I note though, like many of you, I'm having to change the way I work and work from home. So that's with all of the craziness that it entails. So let's just jump right in. Now the first set of books I'm bringing to you are all from the same author. That author is Isaac Asimov. The first book is I, Robot. This was published in 1950 and it recently sold for $8,125. This novel is a fix-up of science fiction short stories and essays from Asimov. The stories originally appeared in Super Science Stories and Astounding Science between 1940 and 1950. The edition had a very limited printing of only 5,000 copies. Uh, they were later compiled into a book by Gnome Press in 1950, which it would be interesting to see if any of these magazines are even still in existence. Uh, the publisher, Martin Greenberg, was actually a friend of Isaac's, a uh, great friend, but the re relationship kind of turned sour with Isaac having been quoted as calling Greenberg a crook in regards to his payments. But the one thing you can't take from Isaac is that he was the author who first coined the word Robotico. Okay, the second book we'll be discussing, or set of books, is the Foundation Trilogy. This consists of Foundation, Second Foundation, and Foundation and Empire. These were published between 1951 and 1953. This set of books recently sold for $21,250. A note though, if you look at this set of books, the dust jacket for Foundation is actually a later printing and also on Foundation and Empire um, has a second and the later dust jackets. So the Foundation Trilogy, this was a series that was first published as a short set of stories in 1942 to 1950 and subsequently in three collections in 1951 through 1953. So for 30 years this book was a trilogy. It also won the one-time Hugo Award for Best All-Time Series in 1966. Isaac Asimov was the child of immigrant Jewish parents who owned a candy store. During the Depression, his parents worked 19 hours a day to keep that store open, and that's what subsequently led to their success. In 1928, he became a naturalized citizen, but at the age of 15, when he applied to college, he was rejected from almost every school. He did end up getting his chemistry degree in 1939 and his PhD in 48. And the third book from Isaac is Caves of Steel. Now this was published in 1954. This recently sold for $5,000. Caves of Steel, with this novel, Asimov advocated that science fiction can be applied to any literary genre. Uh, rather than be a limited genre in itself. The book was first published as a serial in Galaxy Magazine from October to December in 1953. The Doubleday hardcover then followed in 1954. So although Caves of Steel is completely distinctive from his Foundation Trilogy, which was published a few years earlier in 51 through 53, Asimov linked them uh, with the time of Caves of Steel as a much earlier part of an extensive future history leading up to the rise of the Galactic Empire with its fall and rise of the two foundations. Then to replace it with iRobot, introduced in Caves of Steel, uh, which turned out to have been surviving tens of thousands of years. And it played a key role in the periods of both the Empire and the foundations. Also, during this time, Isaac also wrote six science fiction novels for children, and it was under the pseudonym of Paul French. 
The books were called the Lucky Star series and followed David Starr and his adventures into the solar system. Because Doubleday was originally planning on making this into a TV series, he used a pen name in case they were really bad. Uh, in the end, the TV show didn't happen. And in the 1960s, he wrote another science fiction musical for Paul McCartney, who was a huge fan. But that movie never was made either. Now, sadly, a note about the author. Um, during a triple bypass surgery in 1977, he received a blood transfusion. Uh, in the blood transfusion, he contracted HIV. It later blew into a full-blown case of AIDS. And sadly, he died of heart and kidney failure on April 6th in 1992. So we'll move on to the next author. The author for the next couple books is Ray Bradbury. The first book is Dark Carnival. This was published in 1947 and this book recently sold for $3,750. Dark Carnival was Ray Bradbury's first published book. 3,112 copies were printed by Arkham House. Although all but six of the stories had first been published elsewhere, Bradbury revised some of the original text. And for years, he didn't allow it to be reprinted since the updated versions of many of the stories were collected as the October Country. However, a limited edition of Dark Carnival with five extra stories and a new introduction by Bradbury was printed by Gauntlet Press in 2001. Then on August 22, 2006, The Homecoming was published as a standalone short story. So. A lot could be said about Bradbury. Um, he actually failed his language proficiency exam in 11th grade and had to take a remedial grammar course his senior year. He never had any formal education since his family didn't have a lot of money. He wasn't able to attend university. But by the time he ended his first summer after high school, he had already completed 15 drafts. He only received $975 for three of the stories, but that was more money than he had ever seen. So he began traveling in Mexico, and that had greatly influenced his work. So in 1946, Martha Foley wanted to include one of his stories in her upcoming anthologies, but his so-called friend, Beach, who he had traveled with in Mexico, intercepted the offer pretending to be Bradbury and turned it down. It never even reached him, and out of jealousy, Beach did this frequently. He intercepted his mail, his phone calls, and his telegrams, and he admitted it when he was confronted about it later. Okay, so The Martian Chronicles is our next book. This was published in 1950, and it recently sold for $3,500. Um, on Bradbury's Pulitzer Prize Special Citation in 2007, this book was recognized as one of the master works of his that readers could carry with them over a lifetime. And while writing at the publishing company, they wanted him to change his name for print. They tried Douglas Bradbury, R.D. Bradbury, but Ray liked his name best, and so it stuck. And the next book is The October Country. This was published in 1955, and it recently sold for $2,868. Now, four stories appear here for the first time in book form. Those are The Dwarf, The Watchful Poker Chip of H. Matisse, Touched with Fire, and The Wonderful Death of Dudley Stone. Remainder are reprinted most with the versions from Dark Carnival. But The October Country is a collection of 19 macabre short stories by Bradbury. It reprints 15 of the 27 stories in his 47 collection of Dark Carnival and adds four more stories that were previously published elsewhere. So then this book was later published in the UK by Rupert Hall Davies in 56 and reissued in 76 by Grafton, which is an imprint of HarperCollins Publishers. Uh, 
then again in 99 by Avon Books. And the final author who really needs no introduction, that is Stephen King. His name is synonymous with fiction and literature. He's published 61 novels, including the seven under the pen name Richard Bachman, and five nonfiction books. He's also written approximately 200 short stories, most which were put into books. So the first book we'll talk about is The Gunslinger. This was published in 1982, and it recently sold for $3,800. The first chapter of this book was published in the magazine of fantasy and science fiction in October of 1978. Then four more segments were published between 1978 and 1981, and then bundled together and released as The Gunslinger in 1982. But according to King, he had been telling this story to himself for at least eight years before that. He writes about its beginning in quasi-mythic terms in the afterword to the 1982 edition of The Gunslinger. In 2003, King substantially revised the novel, and this is the version that's remained in print ever since, with the subtitle Resumption. So this novel was inspired by Robert Browning's poem, Child Roland to the Dark Tower Game, sorry, Tower Game, which King read as a sophomore. He started this novel on a ream of green paper that he just found at the library, but this book actually took him 12 and a half years to finish. Hence, the book was published as a limited edition by Donald Grant in 1982. It was referred to on the cover of his next book, Pet Cemetery, but it was out of pub it was out of publication by then. The publishers got so many calls about the book that they had to run another 10,000 copies off. Then in 1988, Plume released a trade paperback. In 2003, a revised and expanded version was published, but that was more to resolve some inconsistencies with the later books in the series. Okay, the next book is The Shining. This was published in 1977, and it recently sold for $2,868. My favorite note about this book is, of course, everybody knows that it was made into a movie. But Stephen King hated the movie. He despised it so much, bemoaning the changes the director had made to his story and the performances of the actors. He hated it so much that he scripted his own miniseries version for ABC that aired in 1977. And the next book is The Skeleton Crew. This was published in 1985. This book recently sold for $2,500. This is a collection of short story fiction by Stephen King, published by Putnam in 1985 and a very limited edition of a thousand copies were later printed by Screen Press in October of 1985. This edition was also illustrated by J.K. Potter and contained an additional short story, The Revelations of Becca Paulson. Now Becca Paulson first appeared in Rolling Stone magazine July 19 through August 2nd 1984 edition. Then later, it was incorporated into Stephen King's novel, The Tommyknockers, which was published in 1987. The original title was actually Night Moves. Skeleton Crew is critically held as showing King as a maturing writer with greater breadth than in his previous short stories. It includes some more personal works, including Fort Owen, which was the poem he wrote for his son, and it also features Grandma, which is from an 11 year old boy's perspective. But this is actually drawn from King's own horrors living with his invalid grandmother. And lastly, we'll talk about Carrie. This was published in 1974 and it recently sold for $2,750. So Carrie was actually King's fourth novel, but it was the first to be published it began on his wife's typewriter as a short story intended for Cavalier magazine. But after writing the first few pages, he came through them in the garbage. 
His wife Tabitha picked them up and encouraged them to finish it. She offered to help him with a female perspective. So he took her advice and he expanded the novel. But King is quoted as saying, I persisted because I was dry and had no better ideas. My considered opinion was that I had written the world's all-time loser. So when Carrie was chosen for publication, at the time King's phone was out of service, so his editor at Doubleday, William Thompson, who later became a really good friend, had to send him a telegram in late March or early April in 73. King went out and bought himself a new Ford Pinto with his $2,500 advance against royalties. And then later in May 13th of 1973, the New American Library bought the paperback rights for $400,000. And this was split between him and Doubleday. Okay, so those are the books that I'm bringing to you this week. I have some more that I'll start on, hopefully get uploaded this week. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you like these or you want me to do a specific series, author, or title, please just comment. I would be so happy to do it. And I never like to say this in the beginning of a video, but if you're still with me, give me a like and subscribe. It really helps me in the making of these videos. Okay, everybody, have a great week. Thanks and God bless.